Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. The Ministry of Human Services and Social Security launched Orange Avenue as Guyana joined the rest of the world in celebrating 16 days of activism to eradicate gender-based violence against women and girls. This year's theme is Unite, Let Us Engage and Eradicate Violence Against Women and Girls. The activities will conclude on December 10th. Human Services Minister Dr. Vindya Prasad said Orange Avenue is permanent and aims to create a safe space for citizens. Today we launch Orange Avenue. I am hoping, very much so hoping, that this can be a permanent initiative where we develop an interactive space for persons to come and learn about the services offered, to bring their family, and to be engaged in such a way that we continue the conversation on ways in which we can curb violence. The Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development signed a $13.6 million contract with the North Sophia Community Development Council to develop a community centre. This move ties into the government's sweeping mandate to create employment and foster community development across all areas of the country. The contract was signed on Friday at the North Sophia Playground and will see members of the North Sophia community providing labour and materials for the execution of the project. In his remarks, Local Government Minister Nigel Daramlal stated that part of President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali's vision of One Guyana is to ensure that everyone benefits from the support of the government. This support includes employment opportunities. People must also benefit in terms of the employment landscape. That in, Nor in North Sophia, like many other communities, we have quite a lot of unemployed people or underemployed persons. So we would like, Mr. Chairman, that quite a lot of these youngsters within the, the community, whether male or female, that you are contracted, you are given a job on this project, you are going to be paid. Minister within the Office of the Prime Minister with Responsibility for Public Affairs, Kwame McCoy, recalled that in past, residents raised the need for a community centre to be built for the younger generation to benefit socially and educationally. As such, he described the signing of the contract as significant and demonstrative of yet another commitment fulfilled by the PPPC government. We are doing for every community and doing for all the people in Ghana and the ideal conditions and situations that you desire for your community would come around eventually because it has to be uh, a situation in which we spread around the resources and we work in an incremental way and fashion to be able to bring you all the best that you want for your community. Tourism Minister Onej Walrond also shared similar sentiments and said the centre will provide a safe space for children. Once the centre is complete, residents of North Sophia will be employed as community enhancement workers. Delivering on a commitment made by President Dr. Irfan Ali, Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, Nigel Dharmlal, and Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Diadat Indar, witnessed the signing of contracts for upgrades to the Parika and Lenora markets. The upgrades to these facilities will enable vendors to ply their trade in a designated area, providing them with opportunities for enhanced trade. Minister Indar assured residents that this development is only one aspect of the greater plan to foster development in Region 3. We applaud the people them to come out and make an honest living. But what we want to do is make sure that that honest living and the standard of how you develop and, and carry out your honest living daily is improved. Meanwhile, Minister Dharam Lal said that the modernization of the markets will benefit vendors who conduct business on the parapets, providing them with a tarmac so that vending is done in a healthy manner. Once you see all of the development taking place in Region 3, we believe too that we have to make this centre of business uh, much more upgraded and enhanced. Whilst we're developing as a country, we also have to create a better environment for people to, to do their business. And so see this as an, uh, an investment in, in your business as well that the government is making. Region 3 and 4 is where a lot of the development is currently taking place and you have to grasp the opportunity now and, and make sure that you are part of this bigger plan of President Ali and of the PPPC government. He assured vendors that they will not be displaced during the construction process, which is expected to last five months. Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa on Saturday last commissioned a brand new boardroom and office for the Mahaika Abari Rice Development Scheme at a cost of $14 million. Today we are with the 
intervention that the company has made here, they have expended close to $14 million with new offices, fencing of the offices, office material, um, office furniture and things like that, new vehicles. So I hope that the farmers can have the benefit of these facilities. Earlier in the day, Minister Mustafa and other ministry representatives met with Burma rice farmers to discuss their most pressing concerns. I will ask MMA and GRD to work together. Let us get those farmers who are not cultivated, bring them together and see how we can work with them to start back production in those areas. We must get every single area cultivated this crop and we'll work with those farmers to help to see how we can put the system in place. He also conducted a walkabout in the village of Champagne to listen to the concerns of residents. A meeting is planned for the new week to identify solutions to the concerns raised. After a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the annual school swimming, cycling and track and field championships made a superb return to the Lenora Synthetic Track and Field Facility. The event was declared open by Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips at a grand ceremony on Sunday. The Prime Minister said the government remains committed to improving sporting facilities to hone athletic skills. We've come a long way, and I wish to assure you that you have a government that is committed to allocating in every annual budget the money to improve our sporting facilities Minister of Education Priya Manikchan noted that the championships emulate the government's intention to empower and equip each child in the education system with the necessary tools to succeed. We want to make sure that we create and develop not only academically strong and skilled people, but also people with the necessary skills to This year marks the 60th edition of the Swimming, Cycling and Track and Field Championships. It is a collaboration between the Ministry of Education and the Guyana Teachers Union and will see student athletes and teachers from 15 districts competing over a six-day period. The University of Guyana on Monday commissioned its $181 million Early Childhood Center of Excellence. The center creates a conducive environment for young learners to explore, grow and develop. Minister of Education Priya Manikchan noted that Guyana has the highest nursery enrollment rate in the Commonwealth Caribbean. As such, the investment is fitting since Guyana and the Caribbean can learn from practices which will be implemented at the institution. We have done, I think, as a country that does not mandate early nursery education, attendance in nursery schools, although we do distinguish and we mandate attendance at primary and at secondary, we've done very, very well. So this is a perfectly fitting investment in this country where not only Guyana can learn, but the rest of the Caribbean. I implore you today that you do not make this another school. In fact, we don't need another school. What we do need is to find out how we could make what we have been doing well, how we could make that excellent. The facility is equipped with all the amenities needed by learners and early childhood practitioners and caregivers. The building was also designed to accommodate learners living with disabilities. Some 211 persons from 56 households in Parikawarinao, Region 9, are now benefiting from improved water supply with the commissioning of an $18 million water distribution system on Saturday last. The new system now serves 95% of the community with access to potable water at a household level. Minister of Housing and Water Colin Kroll said two persons were trained by the Guyana Water Incorporated GWI, to man the system. He urged the residents to play their part in ensuring proper management and maintenance of the system. We can't just wait until we come to the communities when you have feedback and then you hear a trestle has issue, a tank is down, a system is down, the solar system is down, a pipe is broken. These are things that must be communicated immediately. Do we agree? Yeah. And so that is why we are going to continue to train even if we'll con we lose 
persons in the system. To date, the government has invested over $200 million to expand potable water coverage in Region 9. Persons living with disabilities can be assured of their lives being improved as the government is working assiduously to provide and expand services for this vulnerable group. Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony made the disclosure at the launching of National Week of Persons with Disabilities and the bumper sticker drive. The theme for 2022 is Transformative Solutions for Inclusive Development, the Role of Innovation in Fueling Accessible, Equitable Roles. Regardless of the circumstances, what we need to build the services that are available to everyone who need these services. And that's the commitment from the Ministry of Health, and that's the commitment from the government of Guyana, because we want everybody to ensure that whatever their needs are, that we'll be able to deliver on those needs. In an effort to enhance the medical facilities and services in Guyana, China handed over a cash grant to the tune of 200,000 U.S. dollars to Guyana to procure medical supplies. The grant was handed over to Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony by China's Ambassador to Guyana, Guo Haiyan, on Tuesday at the Ministry of Health head office. Dr. Anthony, in his remarks, noted that over the years, Guyana has benefited tremendously from the Chinese contingent that would visit Guyana to work at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, GPHC, and Linden Hospital. He pointed out that many Guyanese have benefited from surgeries, the Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccine, and other diagnostics. So this grant falls within that realm, and certainly we would use it to increase our preparedness uh, for COVID-19, and we're extremely grateful uh, to yourself, the embassy there, and of course, uh, the government of China. As the government continues to make significant steps in providing eye care services to Guyanese, Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony noted that some 597 spectacles have been distributed so far through the Snap-on Spectacles program. During Tuesday's COVID-19 update, Dr. Anthony noted that the government purchased 4,500 spectacles through the program. So far, um, of the 4,500, we have distributed uh, 23 uh, spectacles to those who need in regions 10. We have distributed 124 in region 7. And we have distributed 450 in regions 8. The health minister said that the program will continue in various regions. Regions 1 and 9 are set to benefit shortly. We have a team that would go out into these communities. They would test everyone's eyes to see whether or not they require spectacles. And those who require it, would get it almost instantaneously. So once they finish the testing, they're able to give you your spectacles right there. You don't have to wait. Amerindian Affairs Minister Pauline Sukai reminded persons that all 10 administrative regions will benefit from the investments and developmental plans of the government. This assurance was made at the Rupununi Business and Investment Exposition held recently. Minister Sukai noted that with the expansion of the tourism industry and government's investment, Region 9 is set to benefit tremendously. She said the Rupununi has great potential for the service sector, which complements the tourism industry, a sector they must explore. The tourism industry is expanding. Today we are expanding from pioneering tourism product to a much more expanding tourism um, destination as a country and Rupununi can benefit. The government has also been supporting the agriculture sector in Region 9. To foster development and economic opportunities for communities in Region 9, the Rupununi Chambers of Commerce and Industry hosted the Rupununi Business and Investment Exposition Saturday last in Letem, Region 9. The exposition has returned after a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Small businesses from Rupununi and a delegation from Brazil displayed various products at the expo. Delivering the feature address, Tourism, Industry and Commerce Minister Onish Walrand said that the government remains steadfast in its efforts to support Region 9 and small businesses. Our government remains committed to small business development all over the country, including here in Region 9. We continue to support our small and micro enterprises. This is evident by the tangible support we have offered small businesses in the region. Housing and Water Minister Colin Crow urged the Chamber to ensure that investments continue at the community level to guarantee economic stability and growth. And this is important when we speak about development of Rupununi, development of Region 9, development of the corridor. 
it is important too that this transcends into the villages. And so certainly we, will, we would like for the chamber to also play a greater role in working with many of these communities, village councils, etc., so that they can maximize on their potential as to what they have to offer. The expo was celebrated under the theme, creating a strong and secure private sector in Region 9 while supporting the One Guyana initiative. The Ministry of Public Works awarded 35 contracts to contractors from the communities of Albaistong and West of Penitence in South Georgetown on Wednesday. This is the fulfillment of a promise made by President Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali when he visited the community last month. Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Diodat Indar, urged the contractors to hire residents, especially youths, so that the monies being expended by the government can stay within the community to foster development. You are required. Everyone, Everyone under the contract that is signed here today, you are required to hire people from, from our own I, I want to hear people from, from Yonder, Upstart, coming in the community. That, that is not, not what, what we agreed, agreed on between, between the president and yourself. Right? right? Is the people from, from right, right here that got to get involved. involved. This, this is, is what, what this is about. about. It's for, for us to get, get the contractors involved so that, that you make money. money. And you, and get, you get, get the work done, done through people from, from the community, so they can make money, money too. Right? right? So they're so the more in the community. Minister within the office of the Prime Minister, Kwame McCoy, noted that the government is committed to enhancing the lives of all Guyanese, and all Boystong is not left out. Our interest is about working with every community and everyone across this country, because you all belong to Guyana. And we govern for all the people of this country. And I know that even after we leave here this, half, this morning, there will be those who will try to come amongst you and to create the divisions and to stir up the mischief and to say that it is only being done because of this or that or local government elections. But we are not a government for just a season. We are a government for every season. We are here to work with you. We want to see your lives enhanced. We want to see your families develop and the community in which you live become as wholesome as possible. Wednesday saw the passing of the Higher Purchase Bill of 2020, which promotes equal protection for consumers and sellers from exploitation. Minister of Tourism, Industry and Commerce, Onish Walran, presented a bill for its second reading to the National Assembly on Wednesday. In her presentation, she stressed that the bill has benefited from the fullest possible consultation and seeks to promote transparency in the business process. It enjoys broad support of major stakeholder groups and I'm confident that it will significantly improve the commercial environment by providing sorely needed protection for both buyers and sellers on the higher purchase arrangements. Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa commended the bill and noted that it will have a significant impact on the agriculture sector. And bill like these, bill like these will stimulate investment, will stimulate progress and create, they make the small person, the small farmers, the small miners move up and improve their lives. This bill will allow our farmers to confidently invest in high value assets to improve their production, as higher purchase will now be seen by many farmers as a financing solution, which is safe and suitable for expanding the agribusinesses. Minister within the Housing and Water Ministry, Susan Rodriguez, also supported the bill, emphasizing that it was crafted with the intention of promoting fairness and balance. This bill brings certainty and predictability in governing higher purchase agreements. The bill brings balance and fairness in this type of arrangement, both on the side of the buyer as well as on the side of the seller. And Mr. Speaker, after considering all of the mischief that the higher purchase bill seeks to remedy and the fairness with which it brings to the process, I commend this bill to this Honorable House for passage. The Higher Purchase Bill was also supported by Labour Minister Joseph Hamilton and Member of Parliament Sanjeev Datadin. Further, the Public Accounts Committee report for the year 2016 was also adopted in the National Assembly. 
Public Works Minister Bishop Juan Angel, during his presentation, said that the 2016 Auditor General's report, thoroughly examined by the PAC, showed a previous APNU AFC government's failure in transparency, accountability, and good governance. We must ensure at all times that reports that come to the National Assembly that are sent to committees like the Auditor General report that is sent to the PAC is adequately, properly scrutinized, dealt with carefully to ensure we strengthen the accountability framework of this country. Meanwhile, Senior Minister in the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, presented a supplementary bill comprising financial papers numbers 2 and 3 to the National Assembly to address a number of urgent interventions across several key sectors, including energy, agriculture, infrastructure, and Amerindian affairs. The financial papers together amount to over $4 to $7 billion. Additionally, Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Hugh Todd, provided an update on the oral hearings of the Guyana-Venezuela border controversy, noting that a decision is expected to come by mid-2023. Youths across 21 communities are now benefiting from improvement to their community grounds as the Culture, Youth and Sport Ministry has outfitted their grounds with lighting. Culture, Youth and Sports Minister Charles Ramson Jr. made the disclosure while speaking with the Department of Public Information recently. By the end of this year, we would have completed the lighting of 21 community grounds since we came into office. 21 community grounds. And that leaves aside the stadium work that we've already finished our procurement work and it's already starting right now. Over the two years, focus was put on Regions 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. However, this program will now expand to Regions 1, 8, and 9. In its 2022 budget, $3.2 billion was allocated for the continued development of sports, and $250 million was earmarked for the improvement of community grounds. The government remains committed to ensuring the safety and health of workers. Labor Minister Joseph Hamilton stated that for 2022, 1,298 inspections were completed for the public and private sectors. This was disclosed at the press conference for the Occupational Safety and Health OSH Department year-end report on Thursday at the Ministry of Labor's office on Brigdam. Minister Hamilton noted that this number also represents 85% achievement of the inspection target which was set for 2022. 184 workplace accidents were investigated including the 19 fatalities. To date, there has been a 24% decline in the number of fatal accidents when compared with the corresponding period last year. The OSH department is equipped with trained and qualified officers to conduct workplace inspections and pinpoint defaulting employers. Employers will be instructed on the procedures they must take to comply with the law in circumstances where there are problems. This brings us to the end of this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related stories, do log on to our website dpi.gov.gy and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.